Welcome dear students. Join us in this video as we explore the amazing world of food chains, food webs, and the life cycles of animals. Let's delve into how nature supports itself in exciting ways. Let us discuss food chains first. At the bottom of the food chain, we find plants. Plants are called producers because they make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. They use sunlight, water, and nutrients from the soil to create food in the form of sugars. Next, we have animals that eat plants. These animals are known as primary consumers or herbivores. They are the first to eat the plants for energy. Examples include rabbits, cows, and deer. Following the herbivores, we have secondary consumers, or carnivores. These are animals that eat other animals, like a lion dining on zebras. Then come the tertiary consumers, the top predators in the food chain. Examples include a crocodile that might eat a lion or a hawk that preys on smaller birds. It's important to remember how energy flows through the food chain. Plants get energy from the sun, then energy moves to the herbivores, and next to the carnivores. Each level uses some energy for its activities. We also have decomposers like bacteria and fungi. They break down dead plants and animals and return nutrients to the soil, helping plants grow again. Food chains are like a really important puzzle that helps maintain balance in nature. Every living thing relies on others for energy and survival, so if one part of the food chain gets disrupted, the entire ecosystem can be affected. Now, let's make it a bit more complicated. Imagine that instead of a straight line of who eats who, it's more like a tangled web. That's a food web. It is a big network of interconnected food chains that shows how different organisms depend on each other for food. For example, in a forest ecosystem, trees are eaten by rabbits and mice. Then, rabbits and mice are eaten by owls and snakes. Owls may also eat snakes, creating more connections. This interconnection helps us understand that ecosystems are not just a simple line but a complex web of life. Now, let's move on to the life cycle and developmental stages of animals. Reproduction is key to living things. Not all animals reproduce the same way. Let's look at two examples. Cockroaches, for example, start as eggs, then hatch into little nymphs. These nymphs keep growing and changing until they become adult cockroaches. They undergo three stages in their life cycle. On the other hand, butterflies have four stages. An adult butterfly lays eggs, which hatch into caterpillars. After a period of feeding and growth, the caterpillar forms a pupal covering, eventually transforming into an adult butterfly. These examples show that animals have unique life cycles and that it's fascinating to see how they grow. It is important to remember that nature is interconnected, and every organism plays a crucial role in maintaining the balance of our ecosystems. Now, attempt to answer this question. What is the primary function of decomposers in the food chain? Please share your answer in the comments. The complete curriculum for Class 5 is available on our channel. Check out all the links provided in the description below. Please make sure to like, share, and comment for more such videos.